Hi everyone at the St Albans Property Meet in the venue at the Beach House, as you can see all the way around. Lucas, do you want to do a little roll of the venue? The weather's definitely got to people, not as many entrepreneurs as normal, but we'll be talking to a few, trying to get the insights on their property strategies, business strategies. Let's enjoy it and have some fun. Hi everyone, we're at the St. Albans Property Meet. We've got the lovely Ellie who's going to give us a bit of insight. She's a real estate agent. Nice Thank you, Ellie. So you're going to give us a bit of insight on what's happening in the real estate market in London. That's where you focus. So how are you finding it right now with all what's happening with the property market? Intense. It's a good time of year. We get refreshed, meet new landlords, come to networking events. Perfect time of year. I love it. All the lights are turned on. Best place to be in central London right now. Wow. So you think the property market is still doing really well there? A lot of sales? There's always things to do. There's always things to do. If it's not sales, it's lettings, it's property management. There's always reasons to come meet new landlords and us. And what's your like ideal person or real estate, real estate investor that you get? On what type of properties do they invest in? What do you see common in your Me, personally, job? I love Knightsbridge, Mayfair. Nice. I think these are perfect areas to score on. <laughs> uh, but right now, if you're looking for a good investment, I would consider like Zone 3, Zone 4. You can get somewhere good, refurb it, sell it or buy to let. For the people who don't know Zone 3, Zone 4, where is that? Which parts of London? Oh, so there's, yeah, everywhere really. So I'm thinking after Hampstead, more like, so like either Collindale, or you can have going east, you can go towards Canary Wharf, even they got some great tube links I've just opened up. Wow. So you can go pretty much anywhere around London at the moment. Would, would you be buying like an apartment or a buy to let or a HMO? What 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 is the strategy that you see a lot of entrepreneurs or investors doing? HMOs are really popular right now, of course. So many people are trying to move into London, so they're trying to accommodate for as many people as possible. HMOs are always fantastic, but definitely apartments, freeholds are hard to get, but I think you should definitely go for it anyway. Apartments and townhouses are perfect. Wow, and they're normally on joint leaseholds or something like this, or joint freeholds? Joint, that... joint freeholds if you're looking for apartments, houses here and there. Um, but like I said, if you're looking zone three, zone four, maybe you can get a few more freeholds there. Wow, and how have you found the event so far? It's lovely, I've met you, so it's great. <laughs> I love the compliments, that's always good. But you can actually see Ellie's adding value, meeting uh, target market, and also explaining to people about property investing in London, yeah. which we don't get as many people doing because of the high capital prices at the moment. But I guess the recession's helping in that sense because the prices, are they stabilised a bit? Or do you if think... you're looking for cash buy, fantastic. Yeah. Now's your time to get in. But if you're looking for a mortgage, you're going to really need to negotiate with your lender. Right. But right now, yeah, cash buy is in central. How much are you finding on the market value the prices drop? Have they dropped in London in your yeah, place? Yeah, because if you're trying to sell, it's harder to sell to people if like the mortgage rates are high at the moment, of course. Got it. And how much drop do you reckon? 10%, 15%, 5%? Little guess for your bill? 5 to 10. 5 to 10. Yeah, depends. it depends where you're looking. London's so big, so big. So you can't declarify So, negotiations, right? Negotiations, <laughs> what I'm here well, for. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ellie. Really Sorry, appreciate you taking you. time. Thank you so much. Always adding value. Hi everyone, we've got Hitesh, she's a letting agent. He's at the St. Albans Property Meet. And you know, I love giving value. Thank you, Hitesh. Oh, Thank I love you, it. Z. So, you're a bit of a letting agent, bit different. I think we're already connected in the LinkedIn family. Yep. So it's always good. Tell me what you do that is different to other letting agents. Let the LinkedIn family and yeah, social media superb. know. No, thanks, Z, for the opportunity and good question. So I would think with the letting side of things and what way we do things differently is we're very bespoke. So we provide a really personalized service for our landlords. And what that really means is we, we really value the whole tenant find hugely. So, and I don't, don't mean any disrespect to any letting agent out there, but what often happens in the tenant find process is the actual tenant find is farmed out to maybe the least experienced staff member in the office. Yeah. And often they're on antisocial time, after right. work, after 5 p.m. or a weekend. And what that does, it creates a rush and nurture to just pick anyone, potentially, to come into the property. I, I think Hitesh, you were saying off here, one of the really things is getting quality tenants. Yep. Because you get quality tenants, yep. they stay longer. And you do uh, HMOs, for anyone who doesn't know what HMOs are, household or multiple occupancies, i.e. renting by the room. Yep. Uh, because we have very people watching. 
So obviously you specialise. What makes you different? Because you've got a lot of people on your books who want are looking yep. for rooms. Yep. They're I guess professionals. They're probably using as a, a yeah. probably a one or two year strategy. That's the probably ideal kind yeah. of HMO probably. Absolutely. Is that fair? Yeah, absolutely. It's good. Good. That's very fair. So I've been they're, they're, generally we work with high end work professionals. Right. You know, accountants, solicitors. Um, teachers, you know, really professional people who are generally really nice people and they just want a good, comfortable place to make home. And we love know. Hitesh, sorry, already because he mentioned accountants are nice people. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> don't you love that? That's what always makes a difference. So that's the ideal people you look to as a uh, client. Um, the letting agents who um, you do is build those relationships, get the right people who will move in, professionals as you just yep. mentioned and then you look for HMO landlords is that what you're looking for today Absolutely. here at the event yep. anyone who's got HMOs Correct. Um, and do you help them at all with the licensing side because it's getting tricky on it, HMOs these days hey look see the, the whole market on legislation is really tough enough it's getting yeah. really strict you know there's more and more things coming in mm. and it's a really uncertain world so we really help landlords stay compliant you know we're happy to provide like a consultative type approach where we can guide landlords with their property to make sure it's HMO ready Wow. and comply, you know, make sure you've got minimum room sizes, make sure wow. you've got the right amenities. And also not just the basics, it's about generating a really lovely HMO, which is gonna last, the ten, like stand on the test of time. Wow. Which is gonna really attract the right type of tenant. Because if you find the right tenant from day one, Lee, Makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference. Where They'll want to stay for longer. Where are you based? I mean, I live in Watford, in Bushy, and right. we cover Watford, Wembley, Harrow, and yeah, and Perfect. Yeah, so if you need to get a good letting agent in Hertfordshire, right, Hitesh will put his the details in there, we'll tag him in, and hopefully if you need this, he can make a difference to your property journey. Thank you Thank so you much. Thank you so Ian. much. Perfect. Thank you. Hi everyone, we've got Anthony, land agent extraordinaire. He loves that, and that's why I would like to talk <laughs> to him. Thank you, Anthony. Good to see you. Right, Anthony, you deal with the fun of land, so I was saying you connect developers with landowners, is yes. that fair to say? Yes, landowner developer, it's a tricky little part of the industry. It's kind of, parts of it are very old school, it's all kind of relationship based. Of course. And I really enjoy that. So you're kind of, you're putting deals together. We get more involved in deals than maybe a traditional agent and we, I sort of get involved where I can, quite often where people have gone maybe to a traditional agent with something that, they think is a development opportunity. Right. And maybe a normal agent doesn't really know how to deal with it or they don't understand the value in it. So um, that's where I can sort of come in and help them and either get the most out of the deal for the landowner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Or negotiate guess, the best guess, deal for the developer. So jump in, I guess the key thing is one, there's a number of different strategies, right? And you're just yeah. helping them. So yeah. one of them, for anyone watching when they get land, is planning game. Yes. which I see quite a lot. Yep. Uh, I guess one of the things that I see a lot of people struggle with without getting the right advice, love talking about tax and property and land, <laughs> and it's how they hold the land. Yes. Because a lot of people don't are not aware that you can buy in a SAS pension, yep. and there's no capital gains tax in a SAS pension. Right. So if you're doing a planning gain, that will be a good place potentially to hold it, provided you've got a plan for it. Always yes. get advised, look at your circumstances before they say Z gave blanket advice. He's just saying on that case. <laughs> That's one way. I guess the other bit is, I guess a lot of people do JVs. Is that, is that what you see a lot of? Or? Yeah, yeah it's, it's one of those where I think that's, that's where I come in and can advise people a little bit on the best way to structure a deal because there's so many ways to do stuff. Yeah. There's, you know, any one deal that we look at, buying a piece of land isn't buying a piece of land necessarily. It might be doing a JV with a landowner. Yeah, it yeah. might be doing a JV with another developer or someone else who's funding it. It might be something where you could come in and get planning gain and you never actually own the property. Yeah. You've come in, you've made an agreement, whether it's a land promotion, whether it's an option agreement, wow. whether it's some sort of assisted sale where everyone can earn something out of it, but maybe you don't have to have this million pounds to buy a piece of land and expose yourself to all that it, risk. It's about career finance. I work with a lot of property yeah. developers who buy land and one of the things they don't understand is about structuring. Yeah. And you've got to structure. So if you're getting incentivizing people and you're doing a development to build and sell, yeah. you, have you heard of something called investor's relief? Yes. Yeah, a lot of people don't use that. And if you use that, you can actually reduce your personal tax down to 10%, right? Wow. You can even go further if you're actually a developer and you're going to re purpose and use that money again and you're not going to extract it out you yep. can actually pay zero percent on the sale right if you there sell you the shares of the company 
right? So there's right. something called substantial share exemption. I've done an episode of Sky TV on this. So yeah. land, and if land has slightly different rules to residential commercial buildings. Yes. So VAT's dealt with it differently as well. Yeah. So you need to understand this when you're doing it end to end because you can compound in a quicker way and reach your long-term unlocking financial freedom, I call it, and <laughs> getting money in the right place. And I think yeah. a lot of developers struggle. I guess for you, it's repeat, repeat clients, right? Yeah, definitely. That, that's one of the things I enjoy about working with developers is that we can work with them again and again. You know, and it's you can be a little bit, maybe you found this over the years, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. be a little bit selective and work with the clients that you like working with and want to work with and work with them over and over again. And you know, you like working with entrepreneurs. I, absolutely. Um, I guess I guess one thing, Andy, I want to know, where do you focus? Which area are you focus in on, as in where your land deals are right now? So for the some <laughs> social media family are watching this. Yeah. So I uh, my kind of main area where I know really well is Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Northwest London. We do stuff kind of all over the home counties, yeah. but those are the areas where that's kind of my stomping ground. I know those very well. Um, and that's where we've always, wow. always working on deals in those areas. And do you, are investors or developers getting good returns on yeah. the deals? Yeah, definitely. There's, there's actually at the moment, there's really good appetite from developers. Wow. Acquiring sites. They've got to be, as always, you have to be careful about the numbers and you have to make sure that you've done your due diligence right. Yeah, you know, yeah. you're not in a place in the market where you can kind of wing your numbers. Yeah, people yeah, are getting yeah. away with that for a few years and those people are coming unstuck now and probably coming to you saying, yeah. I need to find a way of finding some money out of a deal that I didn't know was there. I think but, you made a really good point for GDV, the yeah. gross development value. That is, I, I, I don't know what your feel is, but the developers I've seen, the really wise ones who got a bit of cash, they're looking for 40, 50% now. Right, before they would have got away 20, 25%. Mm. But that 20, 25% because of building costs and labor rising so much, yeah. and the price of uh, end value of properties dropping mm. right now, we're at a weird time. You've got, to, you've got to have a bigger margin. Are you finding you, that people are more wanting a better return and have a big margin compared yeah. to before? Uh, yeah, I, I, would say, I wouldn't say everyone needs 40, 50%, but you, you've got a bigger buffer there. People need a little bit more fat in the deal. They need, yeah, you know, yeah. they, they need that bit of security and where I guess it, it's, it's coming out of a mentality of everything's going all right, we'll wing it, we'll get, you know, it's only 15, 18%, but we'll get away with it. Don't you can't do that. It's, you have to be so strict and you have yeah. to, that's where I came, come in as well. It's, you know, when I do my due diligence on a deal and I do my figures, yeah. before I even give it to anyone, I'm very careful about that. And I, you know, if anything's below, if anything's even close to 20%, I'll say, look, this is the deal. Be aware that these are the numbers. If you can make it work, brilliant, but it might not be for you. And I think you have to be really open with that. The same way, you know, I, I don't dispense financial advice like you do, but we're all advising clients and we all have to be very careful about how we advise them and the reputation that we have and <coughs> I all love, of that. The reputation is really key. Yeah. And it's also building a sustainable relationship. Sounds like you're doing that. Yeah. Um, is there any particular deal right now that you're working on that you want to show or speak to social media family <laughs> that you're looking uh, to obviously get a return on, I guess? We've got, uh, so we've got a few deals around. I'll be a little bit careful because most of the deals I work on, off market. they have quite, yeah, we've got to be quite discreet. The right. sellers want to be off market, but we've got things in Hertfordshire, Buckinghamshire, Berkshire as well. Wow. We've got something <laughs> in, uh, something, a nice little, actually, a little deal if, we, if you've got developers who are, looking for maybe for their first deal, a self-build builder, looking for their first projects of their own coming out of client work. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a smaller site, that's in Slough, that's a really good little shout. Um, which, yeah, is kind of sub 200K it sounds purchase like we, price. It sounds like we need to have a chat because I've got a lot of property developers that I know. There you go. Fantastic. Anthony, thank you for adding value and giving insight from how land can make you money if you get the right advice and the right people around with you. Perfect. We're at the St. Albans Property Meet. Now we've got Carl, from, who is a construction expert, and he's done a lot of work, and he's helped a lot of other entrepreneurs here at the St. Albans Property Meet. So Carl, you're giving a bit of insight. You help develop properties, uh, yeah. construct them for people, construct some of your own, and you're in HMOs, where you've got some properties that you're doing investments. So you're doing a combination. How'd you get yeah. time to do all that? Um, it's well, been organized, having the right team. Uh, but I've been doing this for a very long time. So I've got a lot of experience, a lot of contacts. How long has it been since you've been in the construction and property uh, world? Altogether, 30 years. Wow. 
experience, right? Yeah. So you've probably seen pretty much nearly every type of project right now. Well, yeah, we've done, I mean, I've done, I used to do buy to let, and then me and a friend got into developing properties. We did that for, you know, a few years. That was a really good business. Uh, more recently, I've been doing HMOs, wow. uh, which have been working really well for us, you know. And then next year, we're going to, me and my business partners, we're going to sort of carry it on. But yeah, on the construction side, well, I've always done construction. And I yeah. started in construction actually by accident. Wow. Because I used to, I had a, when I was working in London, I had a team. And when uh, they were really good, but when we weren't busy, I'd get them working for other, other people. Got it. And then eventually uh, that, they'd lead to construction. It's quite smart. I see a lot of forward thinking construction mm. people mm. or in the building mm. industry, what they do is mm. they have their own projects and they make sure they fill up the time because you've got to have them both running because when you things are delayed, you don't want people just sitting there, you want to still get value. And Absolutely. that's what a lot and, of people And the thing do. is, when you, when you find good people, you need to hold, you need to hold on to them. Mm. Yeah, you know, absolutely. And that's one of the biggest challenges, is keep finding the right people. Yeah. I, I think one of the other things we were talking off here about it was about brands. I, in industry, a lot of people always feel a bit, bit under the pressure when they're working with builders. Mm. Are they going to do them over? Are they going to actually deliver what they say? Yeah. How do you mitigate that? Well, well, look, well, two, well two things. Really. Luckily, a lot of our work is from rec recommendations. If you do a great okay. job for somebody, their friend, their aunt, their uncle is going to come. They're going to come. Yeah, they're going to come to you. Um, also, it's it's been transparent from the day one. You know, okay. you've got to be you've got to be honest with people yeah, from, the, yeah. from the get go. You know, and you know, you tell them, you know, you, you tell them stuff they don't want to hear. You know, but you're telling them for the right reasons. Do you know what? I have that in my profession as well because I run an accountancy tax advisory okay. about this, right? That's my specialism, one of them. And what I find is sometimes you have to give bad news, but our job is how do we mitigate it? How do we make them think differently? The same with yours. You're managing people, right? Yeah. I, I suppose when, you, when you're going to give them news they don't want to hear, you've got to give them, you've got to give them the silver lining. Because it might be like, you want to do this, that ain't going to work, but if you thought about this, this might work for you. But that's the skill set, yeah. isn't it? And that's how you take it book. Mm. Yeah. So how have you found the, obviously, property investing side? Because I always love talking to it, because oh, you've got the construction. Love it. Absolutely love it. So you do predominantly HMOs. Yeah. Uh, have you ever looked at commercial property at all? I've done commercial property. And my conversions, or? Yeah, my, my, oh. most of my career is being residential properties. Right. So I, and again, it's one of these things, I never planned to do property. I used to be in the music business years ago. And then um, I got involved with a, a, a friend of a friend, and we ended up buying properties together wow. and we would just yeah we convert them split them into flats wow that sort of thing yeah. doing like a title split and all that stuff yeah, yeah. there's a huge value yeah. and if you structure yeah. that you can do it quite efficiently and a lot that's of people that's the thing because we went in to, we were green cucumbers when we got into it don't get me wrong but over time we got we got really good at it and that's how you differentiate you can't necessarily teach someone that is whether they've got that creativity or not that's right yeah and i think that is the natural bit mm -hmm. listen Cole. obviously we'll include Carl here if you want to hear about construction in Hertfordshire I assume it's Hertfordshire that you predominantly deal yeah, with yeah, no, um, yeah. make sure you can contact him through the LinkedIn mm. comments below or any other social media channel you're seeing mm. and I'm sure he'll keep up and come back to you Absolutely. thank you Carl oh, right, thank you thank, thank you so you. much you? perfect right everyone we had a great St Albans property meet we've got Craig who's one of the people who runs it with Julie and Julie's still looking after some of the entrepreneurs that have come to the event so she's over there Craig Thank you always having us here, we really yeah, appreciate it. Absolute and thank pleasure. you for letting us speak to so many entrepreneurs because everyone in the LinkedIn family along social media knows I love talking to entrepreneurs and getting their views on all this. You've been telling me that you've been going viral recently <laughs> yes. in TikTok. Yes. Tell me a bit so about that. We've got this uh, development project in Andover, which was this um, house that was built in 2015. Wow. And the people who moved in, unfortunately, had loads of issues with the original developer. Wow. They have literally gutted the entire place. There are no ceilings, no walls, no kitchen, no bathrooms. So we have bought the shell from this. So I did create a little TikTok slight clickbait title saying have we bought a money pit <laughs> well it's gone a bit crazy on on tiktok it's had 470,000 views on tiktok wow and then somebody completely independent then shared it on the local spotted in andover facebook group which only has 30,000 subscribers wow. in a town with a population of about 50,000 wow well just before coming out tonight i checked it it has been viewed 770,000 times 
So in the last week, we've had 1.2 million people look at our project. Unfortunately, it's all about what a terrible state it's in at the moment, but the, what they'll see going forward is how we're renovating this place and turning it into an amazing seven bedroom, 3,000 square foot house. So follow Gallant Development on TikTok and watch the progress. Wow, and I think that's a nutshell where Craig's been using the power of social media to communicate the value and the things he's doing right and the things he hasn't done right because people like to learn and learn how to accelerate their uh, financial freedom journey, i.e. what they're doing through their property development. Also, this event, Craig, right? Obviously, it was a bit busier last month, and I think it's because of the rain and the weather. Oh, storm but, Kieran has been uh, no, raging but, on out in the background. What I always notice is we get so many entrepreneurs, and you guys, yourself and Julie, are so good at connecting people. What, what makes it feel so different for you in this event? Because it's different to well, other events. We do it completely differently from other people. There is no sales pitch. There's no training course. This is about property people helping property people. Yeah. We have over, I think it's 190 people on our WhatsApp group. If you've got a question, you can only become a member of that WhatsApp group if you've actually attended this show. Uh, I haven't this had event. the invite in this one. When am I it, getting it's one? It's on the QR code. Oh, so I've you have to be it. here, scan the QR code, then you become part of our group of support. So you can literally ask a question, then you've got 190 people who wow. can help you on your property journey. So we're wow. all here about supporting each other and making everybody's journey a fantastic journey to go on. I think that's so important, and especially as being an entrepreneur, it's quite hard. It's quite a lonely world, and these are kind of events that you go to, meet people like Craig and Julie, will help you connect with people and build up a, um, a family of some sort in the sense from an entrepreneur's perspective, because very few people know how other entrepreneurs think, um, and the only ones that tend to do is when they're in the same boat. Craig? So, good example for today, there was a lady who came up who said she needed some help with designing a kitchen. So I happened to meet somebody earlier in the evening who designed kitchens. It was her first time to the event as well. So let me introduce you to each other. So as um, Debbie was talking to Hazel about this kitchen, it turned out it wasn't just the kitchen she needed redesigning. She's trying to sell her house. So Debbie then said, as this project manager and, and kitchen designer said, well, look, there's other ways we can do things, including things like I, I've recently done in Amdo, they're like pressure washing the roof wow. to really improve the curb appeal. So they're actually going to have a meeting after this event to then say, look, what do we actually need to do to really optimize the value of your house and to sell it? So you may have one idea in your, in your head, but if you share it with lots of people in here, you have so many people that can help you from things you may not have even thought of. Because as Simon Zucci famously said, you don't know what you don't know but you've got 190 other brains working on a project so uh, this is a great way of coming here asking questions getting loads of people to share advice and it's a great way to network i think simon zushi probably stole that from someone oh, right it's and, uh, but, it, it, but it's, it is very true because it's not just about obviously building relationships there's also those relationships can be monetized in the sense that you will get business and craig's been helpful we had carl just before he's also mentioned he's got a lot of business because People help others. If you help other people, you get the know, like, and trust. That's how you build a community, and that's how you get business. And people so, buy from people. Absolutely. People they like and Ab trust. Ab absolutely. And this is a great way to meet people, see who you like, see who you trust. And it's a great network. So if you want to turn up, it's the first Thursday of every month. We meet here in the Beach House in the town centre of St Albans. Perfect. Free to attend. Just go on Eventbrite so we can record your details. We then send you reminders each month on, on what's happening. What Craig will do is when we put this post on social media, I'm sure he'll like and comment on there and we support that. And if you do want those details, you have those and you can click on the link and then get, come in, come see us. Well, there's one little new bit of news for the new go year. On. We are coming up with a new thing in this thing. We are having the speaker in the corner. Wow. So each wow. month we're going to have an individual expert. It's wow. not a sales bit. It's not like presenting to everybody, but we'll have like a planning consultant or an architect or a lettings person or a tax advisor. So we'll literally say, you can come over in the corner, you put your banners up, and if anyone's got any questions, say the month you're going to come and become our expert in the corner, then they can come and, and you know, target that, that one. So you'll see some adverts coming forward of our new thing, the, the speaker in the corner. So that's just fresh, fresh hot off the, the news. I, I love that. Knowledge is power. Thank you, Craig. Excellent. Really appreciate Thanks it. Really enjoy it. That's been the St. Albans property meet, and I really enjoyed this. I know, Lucas, have you enjoyed it? <laughs> Perfect. Excellent. I hope you guys enjoyed the content as well, and hopefully see you in the future. Perfect.